will say good day to you this day of your time. How are you? All right, once again, we thank you for the co-creation of this interaction and the allowance of this transmission from our reality to yours. We have thus then arrived at a place where we can now deliver a new tool, a new idea for you to utilize, for you to incorporate, for you to assimilate, for you to integrate within your collective consciousness and your individual consciousness to apply into your physical reality experience for the purpose of acclimating more readily to the vibrations of acceleration and ascension that are now coming about in your collective energy as you approach the crossing of the threshold that you call 2012. Although, of course, this transformation has been going on for quite some time and will continue for quite some time after that date. This represents, as we say, the tipping of the scales, the crossing of the threshold from one idea to another, the leading edge of the wave of your collective consciousness, tipping the scales from the idea of negative energy to positive energy for the first time in many thousands of years upon your planet. Thus then, with the tipping of the scales to allow for slightly more positive energy collectively to exist on your planet after that date, you can use that energy to accelerate, as you say, to snowball the effect of positive energy, both collectively and individually as you accelerate your shift from parallel reality to parallel reality. Designing, in a sense, within your relationship to higher mind, designing the reality that you prefer and shifting to the reality that already exists, that is more reflective and more representative of the reality of the parallel Earth reality that you say you prefer, that you say you wish to align to. And remembering that the idea is not just the notion of a wish. It is not just the notion of a visualization. It is also the notion of action, of behavior, of behaving like the person you wish to be in the reality you wish to experience so that you can ground all these energies like a circuit into the experience of physical reality. For if you continue to the idea of contrary behavior to the visualization of the version of yourself in that reality, it will not anchor that vibration in your experience and you will not shift to that particular parallel reality. It is all about forming a cohesive whole in thought, word, and deed so that the totality of your being is present and the totality of your being is expressing the actions, the attitudes, the behaviors that go hand in hand with the changes that you say you wish to make within yourselves, but which in a sense are not holistically expressed, if not on every level, every moment. So, as we thus then apply this new information today, please recall all that we have said, not just in this particular momentary event, but in all the tools and suggestions and permission slips that we have shared with you, applying them when and where necessary, every moment, opening up your imagination conduit to the higher mind and forming that relationship with the higher mind so that in the balancing of the higher mind with the physical mind, you can truly function as a whole person on whatever version of Earth you truly wish to experience. We have in this particular event shared with you the idea of the 111111 11, 11 gate and have given you many suggestions for how to use the resonance of that particular energy, those parallel tracks, those parallel lines, that which is considered to be the symbol of reflection, and suggested some ideas for how to utilize permission slips involving mirrors and your own reflections in a variety of ways for you to utilize in whatever way your imagination sees fit. We have thus then also described and explained the structure of the nine levels of consciousness so that you can truly understand and incorporate the true relationship between all these levels and also how it is that from the physical point of view and the conscious mind's point of view, thinking that it is on top, 
It has created also the shadow reality below it that allows it to think that the feelings and belief systems it seeks to tap into are somehow below, but are truly, now you understand, to be above. And thus then knowing that whenever you seek to connect to the idea of your belief systems to change and shift your reality in the way that you prefer, it is about expanding your energy upward to make the connection rather than going downward into the ideas you have labeled the sub and under unconscious minds, which in reality are above vibrationally the conscious mind of thought, which together forms the idea of a behavior with the emotions and the beliefs. Using the template level reality, freeing yourself to use it as a blueprint to change those blueprints, to allow yourself more conscious recognition of your agreements, uh, and to rearrange the idea of the themes that you chose to explore so that you become transparent to yourself in such a manner as to call forth again, acting holistically, the vibrations and the state of being that are representative of the reality you prefer, and in so aligning with those vibrations, in attitudes of gratitude and expressions of calm and peace and creativity and love and acting on your passion every moment that you can to the best of your ability with absolutely zero expectation for how it should all work out, you will thus then be squarely in the center with your magnetic compass needle pointing to your true self uh, moving forward along the path through the concept of space and time that you have created yourself to experience as part of the way of knowing creation, part of the way of experiencing process, part of the way of expanding your consciousness and imprinting your soul with the idea of a unique spirit that adds to the totality of the experience of how all that is experiences itself. Thus then, this day of your time, we will add now the notion to cap this off of what we have called the laws of attraction and repulsion, and the ways in which you use them and the ways in which you can use this very simple but very powerfully profound idea and notion to aid and assist you in accelerating your energy so that you can match the frequencies coming in, radiating from the leading edge of the collective consciousness as you cross the threshold in 2012, and also so that you may have more clarity and a better capacity, shall we say, to transform very rapidly the idea of any beliefs that you wish to transform, and letting go of those which do not resonate in compatibility with you, and allowing those that do resonate in alignment with your true self to come to the forefront front and be incorporated and integrated within the totality of your being. Thus then, let us begin to examine the idea of the laws of attraction and repulsion. Now, we have in some ways covered these ideas from a variety of perspectives and have many times used other words in which to describe these things. And as we move forward in this description and explanation, today of your time, we will also, as usual, to illustrate the point, provide a couple of different permission slip exercises that we will take you through. One to begin with in the first part of this transmission and one in conjunction with your holotope experience later on as you know time to exist. The idea, however, is profoundly simple. Understanding, as we have already explained on several occasions, that the idea is that you are resonant frequency energy, that your consciousness vibrates at a certain pitch, that you yourself have a particular signature vibration that represents your unique beingness. And this particular resonant vibration, your core vibration, your true vibration, the vibration that represents you as a unique creation, a unique facet of the multidimensional crystal of creation, a unique expression of all that is, is in a sense a constant vibrational frequency. No matter what you may layer on top of it, in terms of your personality structure, in terms of how your beliefs may shift and your feelings may be expressed and your thoughts may play out and your behavior may unfold, always, always, always at your core, 
There is this signature vibration that goes all the way up the ladder that represents the unique expression, the unique extension of creation that you were created to be. And that is a constant and it is always with you and is always representative of you. And that is why as you do continue on your journey in this life, in the idea of the afterlife, in other lives, you will find that the more you integrate and the more you become more of yourself and the more you expand in spirit and soul and the more you take the place in the oversoul and above and beyond all that, into all that is, you will find that the perspective you will always retain will be as if all that integration is happening to you. And this will be the perspective you will maintain even in arriving at the level you call all that is, it will be as if you have become all that is. But this perspective, paradoxically, will be experienced by every single facet of all that is. Each aspect, each facet will experience itself in time becoming all that is. And thus then all that is contains all the pieces experiencing themselves ultimately as all that is. This is the holographic nature and the holographic structure of existence in that every single piece of the whole contains the whole, can express the whole on some level in some way so that each piece contains all the information of the whole. And in knowing that, you yourself know that you have all the information you need to be whatever unique experience you have chosen to be and can know that it is always with you, can always be tapped into, can always be downloaded into you and you don't really have to go seeking anywhere to find it. It's all here, it's all now because there is only one moment in creation. Now, now, now and now, always now, never then, never when, never sometime to be. Always it is now, and everything you call a different moment is just the same now from a different point of view. So the idea thus then of the vibrations of attraction and repulsion have been talked about in your society now in recent times with great fervor and great acceleration because it is now the recognition that this is a true vibratory principle that you can utilize in your life in a variety of ways. That having been said, Many of the concepts, many of the ways in which this has been expressed, all well and good, all germane, all perfect for what they are, have in some ways now orbited around the central idea of how this mechanism actually functions. Many of you have a certain idea that when you talk about the law of attraction, you know that if you order your frequency to a certain level, in a sense, if you pattern yourself in a certain way, you will attract those things that are of similar vibration. And in a sense, that is so. And you know that if you allow yourself to be out of alignment with your true self, you will attract things in a sense that are of the vibration of misalignment. And in a sense, that is so. And you know that when you have a vibration that is not compatible with something else, you know that the law of repulsion will come into play in that those things that exhibit more and more incompatibility, vibrationally speaking, will drift farther, 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 and farther apart from each other until such time as those things that are truly incompatible with one another will simply cease to experience one another because they will no longer really be sharing any kind of an agreement of the same reality experience. This is the other thing that we have also mentioned about in the crossing of the threshold in 2012 and what we have referred to by analogy as the train station. The idea that you have many tracks and they all go through this station. But after they go through this station, they start to split apart to go to their own individual destinations. And at first, the tracks are still relatively close together after they leave the station. But the longer the train travels, the farther apart it will get from any other train, from any other track. And so it becomes, in a sense, less likely that you'll be capable of shifting from train to train, from track to track, the farther apart the trains and the tracks get. And this is why it is so important now in this time to be on the track you really wish to be on. There will be a short amount of time 
in which you will still be capable of perceiving the other trains, the other tracks, but it will also in time be more and more difficult and less and less probable that you'll be capable of shifting from one track to another, so it is a good idea to make sure that you've bought a ticket on the appropriate train. Now that it's leaving the station. While you still have the opportunity to experience what it is you say you prefer to experience. Thus then, this is an analogy of the law of repulsion in that all these incompatible vibrations will begin to segregate out and push away from everything that is not, in that sense, compatible with it. This in this idea shows you that repulsion is just as strong an idea, just as strong a force, if you will, as the idea of attraction. And in that sense, without repulsion, attraction will not find the places in which those things that you are attracting can reside. For you must make room for those things that are you by letting go of those things that are not. Now, herein lies the real profound understanding and the core of this idea of the law of attraction and repulsion. Many of you, because again of the way you've been taught to sort of express yourself, to think, to frame things, to label things, to define things in your physical reality, have this kind of a picture in your head that when you vibrate in a certain way, you are attracting something from somewhere else to here. And that when you, in a sense, uh, release uh, something else, you are releasing it, so to speak, from here to somewhere else. Well, of course, many of you now understand that everything exists right here and now. It's not really coming from anywhere else or going to anywhere else. It is, in a sense, simply being rearranged as a ratio of energy, as a balance of energy, as an equation of energy within the consciousness that you are. But you can still use the analogy of the vibration of attraction and repulsion as you have been doing. And at the same time, we would now like to introduce another way of looking at this, another way of imagining this, another way of picturing this so that you can understand how to let go of any concept of effort or struggle with this idea of attempting to attract and attempting to let go so that it will help accelerate whatever process you do deem is necessary for you when you plant in to this equation this particular variable we are about to introduce. Because you see, this is all about the nature of existence and you are part of the nature of existence. And in that context, as a part of the nature of existence, there really is no separation between you and existence itself. So the vibrations that we are talking about here of attraction and repulsion, you are really immersed in this energy. It is, in a sense, not separate from you. And because that is so, you can use these principles with the following understanding. I'll just put it to you this way. You are not doing all the work. And you don't have to do all the work in the following way. The things, the ideas, the beliefs, the concepts, the experiences, the opportunities, whatever you wish to call them, that are vibrating in alignment with your true core self are already doing their utmost to be attracted to you. The ideas, the synchronicities, the beliefs, the vibrations, the opportunities, the situations, the circumstances that are not aligned with that core radiant signature frequency that is your true self are doing their utmost to get away from you. The only reason the things that are attempting to get to you don't get to you is that you're keeping them away. 
The only reason the things that are attempting to get away from you don't get away from you is you are holding on to them and not letting them go. The energy of the law of attraction is not just you attracting things to you. It's the attraction itself being attracted to you, coming to you, desiring to be part of you because it recognizes the vibration that is your core signature frequency and can, by law, do nothing but be attracted to you. The things that are not you cannot do anything but, by law, attempt to remove themselves from the vibration they are not. This is the law. This is the variation of the third law. What you put out is what you get back. But this is the polarity understanding of that third law. That reality itself, existence itself, creation itself, nature itself is vibrating in these ways and these vibrations can only align with similar vibrations and must move away from what they are not compatible with unless and because you have been given the free will and the ability to choose to keep something at bay that is attempting to attract itself to you or hold on to something tightly that is attempting to escape from you. And so everything we have shared with you about getting in touch with your beliefs, refining your understanding of who and what you are and defining yourself more clearly has been all about the purpose and the focus of understanding how to let go of things that are already attempting to go away and how to let things in that are already attempting to find you and connect with you. You are not doing the work in that sense of attracting and repulsing. The attraction principle and the repulsion principles are automatically built into nature. You are only doing the work of letting the things in that want to come in and letting go of the things that want to go. That's the work you're doing. You don't actually have to learn how to attract. You don't actually have to learn how to repel. You just have to learn to let in and you have to learn to let go. That's all you need to do. Now, doesn't that sound a little more simple? <clears throat> all right. So when you understand that all of these things that are truly representative of your core vibration, the things that are representative of the life you say you desire, wish, prefer, would be overjoyed and passionate to live, now that you know they are banging at your door trying to get in, maybe you will let that door open a crack. And now that you know there are things that are not representative of the vibration of your preference at all, things that are wholly incompatible with your core frequency, that are banging on the inside of the door trying to get out, maybe you will open that door a crack so that what needs to get out can get out and what needs to come in can come in. All you have to do is open the same door and the things that need to leave will leave and the things that wish to come in will come in. You will invite them in and you will invite them to leave. It is as simple as that. They want to be where they need to be. The vibrations that are incompatible with your signature core want to be elsewhere. The vibrations that are compatible with your signature core want to be with you. The reality that they bring with them wants to be with you. The reality that isn't you doesn't want to be with you. It wants to be where it belongs. Let it be where it belongs. Let it go find its home. Let the things that need to find you come home to you. Because they are you. They are your home. They are your frequency. Now you can see with this analogy that you are floating around as individuals in a sea of whirlpools and vortices and eddies that are attempting to locate you. And as you allow them to come in, you will allow them to swirl and spiral into you. And as soon as they begin to swirl and spiral in, when you allow those other things to swirl and spiral out, 
you will make room for those things that belong with you and give freedom to those things that don't instead of keeping them prisoner in your dungeon of pain and sorrow and suffering. This is why you have the phrase on your planet, misery loves company. You're holding on to all the things that are reflective of those things that don't belong to you and thus then create misery because you think that no one else is knocking at the door when in fact all the things that would be representative of your joy are out there knocking, 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 going, where is he? Where is she? Why does it seem that no one is home? And that is because you have created, by holding on to those that don't belong in your house, you have created such a cacophony of sound, such an overwhelming volume of sound of all of those individuals being so miserable and chatting in your mind and desiring to get out but not being let out and complaining about it that you can't hear who's knocking at the door. It overwhelms the sound of that which wants to come in. So. You need to quiet those noises of the things that don't belong, quiet the chatter, and say, you know what? <sighs> Party's over. It's time for the new party to begin, the one that is more compatible with my vibration. Time for you all that don't belong here to go find the parties you do belong to. Because you see, all things, as we say, serve double duty. And it is not that many of those things are in and of themselves bad or wrong by any sense. It just seems that way because they don't belong with you. And thus then when you let them find where they belong, they can be transformed into positive energy. And thus then everyone can be having a positive party simultaneously by allowing those components to find the correct houses in which they belong, the correct people to whom they belong. So, all of you now with this new understanding that this vibration is a part of nature and is seeking you out, that which is aligned with you, and that this vibration is a part of nature, of those things that wish to move away that don't belong to you, and are attempting to do so, but cannot as long as you use your free will and your belief system to hold on to them, now perhaps you can relax the idea of feeling like there is something special you need to learn to attract things and something special you need to learn to let things go. The only thing, as we said, you need to do is let in and let go. You do not need to learn to attract. You do not need to learn to repulse. These things are automatically built in to nature, to creation itself. You just need to allow it to operate according to the idea of your true signature frequency.